When we were asked this week on resuming um, this term, the start of this term by many commentators and journalists and reporters, etc., as to what we expect to be the dominant theme that we might may be engaged in during the course of this term. We've all said the mortgage arrears crisis stands out, the upcoming budget, of course, uh, the Senate referendum, uh, Dáil reform in preparation for local and European elections and the part of our respective political parties. But they are all connected and intertwined and underpinned by the mortgage arrears situation. And that is the major issue. That is the pivotal and most pertinent issue. And the success or failure in dealing with the mortgage arrears issue has an undoubted domino effect on all other areas mentioned. An example of that is in the education field, which was discussed during leaders' questions earlier this morning. And when I and others speak to our constituents over the course of the summer and beyond into the past, one thing is very striking. Not only the threat and the fears in relation to the financial situation caused by the mortgage situation, the mortgage, mortgage issue, but their fears and the threat they have in relation to their ability as parents to be able to pay for and to educate their children, whether that's in primary, secondary, or third level. And we know now, too, from speaking to uh, students and indeed the workforce alike, that a primary degree in present situation and circumstances is in many cases no longer sufficient to entering the workforce. A master's is the pursuit of many students. And the costs associated with that are very excessive. And the cuts we've seen in that area alone, not to mention the issues raised this morning, by this government in all areas of education lends us to believe, and it will be within our document, that education and the likes of mental health must be ring-fenced in any upcoming budget. Deputy Neville, as is, as he has done on many occasions, mentioned the effects that this crisis is having on the mental health, not only of individuals, but of society in general. And that, coming from a government party member, as has emanated from many others, must reinforce the Minister for Finance and the government in general and its intention, surely, to ring-fence funding in that sector in order to protect the most vulnerable. Another area that is causing great grief and great consternation amongst our constituents, and if you were to carry out a survey on all deputies and the representations they receive, there has been an obvious upsurge in the area of housing as people seek to find homes, find replacement homes, and so forth. And the conventional methods of dealing with this situation are now practically defunct. And there has been no innovation. There has been no new initiatives, no new thinking in this regard on the part of government and on the part of those charged with responsibility in this area. And that is very obvious when you hear people saying there are local authority housing units idle in estates in my county and in many others. And yet local authorities don't have the funding don't have the capabilities within their own resources to make those houses suitable uh, for people to take, uh, to, to take hold of. And does that not say that you have to find ways and means of generating funding in order to address these issues? And it was deputies, deputy from Kerry earlier, Healy Ray, I think, mentioned, as others have done also, but to no avail the need for a new tenant purchase scheme to take advantage to take advantage of the prices that have, have, have fallen 
for those who, who might be able to afford it. And to give much needed business in the financial sector that is affordable and is real and that can have an effect and can have a, a positive effect on society and the demands of society in that area presently. You could also look at ways and means by which contract, contracts could be innovative in a way which would allow incoming tenants the opportunity or the options of making those house, houses suitable uh, for, for their usage. Because lying idle helps nobody whatsoever, and efforts must be made in that regard. And the other issue, too, that is created, that we are discussing and that will form uh, much of the debate in and outside the House in the coming weeks is the whole area of, of, of the Senate referendum. And who does the Taoiseach appoint and charge with responsibility of fighting that election? Only the Minister for Jobs. Where would you get it? Or how crazy is it to think at a time when the needs in that sector are so great, when the needs in the educational sector combined with that department are so great, that that minister is sacrificed by the Taoiseach to fight an election to abolish the Senate. Of course, he is fighting an election that is a pet project of the Taoiseach, it was initiated back in 2009. And it reminds me, you know, first of all, obviously, the Taoiseach is going to win anyway. Because if he wins the election, it's his victory. If he loses it, it's poor Richard's defeat. And it's, it, it reminds you of the, 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 the predicament Charlie Flanagan was put in, in in the presidential election. There's a common thread there. And it may, you know, it may, it may have been such that a reform Senate might have had better success, might have had a greater opportunity to critically analyze the insolvency bill that was passed in this House recently. Because as is the want of this government, as is the norm of this government, with its massive majority, and which was evident in the passing of legislation to give effect to the property tax, and which was evident in the passing of legislation to give effect to the cutting of child benefits, and which was obvious in the legislation that gave effect to attacking the most vulnerable in society, as said by the ESRI, that the last two budgets were the most regressive, and far more regressive than the one previous by the Fianna Fáil -like government, which took twice as much out of the economy, but it was said to be progressive. And that's by an independent assessment. But this government, as the Taoiseach said here yesterday, don't do debates. They do it their way, because it's the only way in town. And it reminds you, it, remind, it, it lends me to think that if, if Carlsberg did autocratic government, they'd do it the way of Fine Gael and Labour. That's Labour's way, and that's Fine Gael's way. Far be it, far be it uh, uh, Frankfurt's way, or anybody else's way for that matter. But the problem is, Minister, and you're here representing the government, and I respect that, and I, I ask you to take the message that is coming and emanating from this side of the House from all speakers in this regard. And it may be that we in opposition may be proved right come next May or June. And it may be then that the government might appoint an independent mortgage resolu resolution office and allow an independent authority inform government of what is as plain as it knows in your face the failure of the bank veto within any insolvency bill. And that may benefit us, that may benefit other opposition parties politically, and it may condemn you and your parties to a disastrous electoral success, electoral defeat. But our electoral success and your failure will be at the expense of many distressed families across the country in every town, village and city on this island. And that's a legacy that none of us want, least of all you and government should want. 
So the Taoiseach continues around the country in his happy, clappy form, high-fiving around the country. I think it's incumbent on you and others and government parties and backbenchers and so forth to get this economic council who are leading the charge in government, to get them into a room. And if they haven't already seen the rerun of the Finance Committee a couple of weeks ago, if they haven't already seen what the banks had to say then, maybe haven't watched that in its entirety, maybe then they might see sense. Maybe then the Taoiseach might hold the banks to account. Maybe then he could call them in. And maybe then he could appoint an independent mortgage resolution office. And maybe then, maybe then, you might for the Irish people, you might for the electorate, you might for those that are in such dire straits, you might then have a pure definition of what is sustainable resolutions. You might then, for example, say that a, a definitive sus sustainable resolution is a split-level mortgage, is a reduced interest rate attached to a mortgage, is increased terms attached to a mortgage, is debt for equity scheme. They are sustainable resolutions to the crisis, to the problems, to the mortgage difficulties people have. A sustainable resolution is not a bank issuing proceedings to take the house from the people who can't afford to pay the mortgage they had initially thought they could through no circumstances of their own. Their situation has been has, has different. That obligation is on you, <coughs> is on your colleagues, is on this government to get to grips with the situation. You were long enough shouting and giving out about light touch regulation getting us where, where we are. You were long enough saying the bank guarantee got us where we are. Now you have an opportunity to address the issue. And about the political charges and, the, the, and so forth that have been made against us here today and in the past, you've put your politically charged inquiry in place and more luck to you. And we in our party, present and past, will meet our responsibilities in that regard and answer all questions that are put to them. Thank you, Despite Louis. the benefit you may feel your government will gain coming into election, because that's what you do. But apart from that, apart from that political game that you continue to play and that political name-calling that you continue to persist with, Thank you, Deputy. you have an opportunity and obligation to meet the most pressing demand that is placed on you by the Irish electorate here today, and that is the mortgage resolution situation. Thank you, Deputy. You have abdicated it, Deputy and you have stood at arm's length from the banks here to four. And it's time to get down and dirty with them, and it's time to hmm. play effectively. Hmm. Play effectively. You have, a, you have an insolvency bill there that talks about, as I said, sustainable Sorry, resolution. Deputy Deputy you don't seem to Deputy know what Cowan. it means. You've had, you've had a good innings, Deputy Cowan, in this. So yeah, well, the government have had a good innings, too, and it's near time well, I want to they some responded time. to the innings and played the game I want properly to some time and played it right. Your colleague, because Deputy we can Dooley. play politics, as I said, when the inquiry comes about. So, I, I would call but Deputy the people Dooley. that are affected are those that have to be resolved. So you play your game and bring that back Order. to government.